Hi there, and welcome to another Tech Tips Tuesday. Today we're going to take a look at how binary works within your electronic equipment. It really is quite simple. So let's get started. This is a pretty standard looking logic diagram. This is for the CD4028, which is this IC right here. They also make this in a surface mount version, which is quite a bit smaller than this. So this entire logic diagram is for this little IC. Now any of you that are Nixie Tube people would probably recognize this number right away. This is a BCD to decimal decoder. BCD stands for binary coded decimal to decimal decoder. So the D, the C, the B, and the A columns are the BCD or binary coded decimal columns and the zero to nine is the decimal portion. So BCD to decimal decoder. Now, any of you that are looking at this, you know, kind of stuff for the first time, you're probably saying to yourself, eh, that looks a little bit confusing. And well, you're correct. And the electronics industry loves to make things confusing and they don't even include the proper information. This is actually missing very crucial information to use this list. And so many of them do this. So you see here, one equals high, zero equals low. Well, one, which equals high, basically means positive and zero equals low, which equals negative. So if this IC was to be running at five volts DC, one would equal five volts, zero would equal ground or very close to. So these here, D, C, B, and A are actually pins assigned on this IC. And we'll take a look at the pin assignment here quite shortly. And these are the outputs on the actual IC. So if we give it a certain string of binary, it will illuminate the number one or the number two or the number three. So picture these as being light bulbs. So we have 10 light bulbs here. Each light bulb has a number on it, zero through nine. All right, if we were to put these, say uh, we'll just take this for example, this code here on the input pins, which are the D, the C, the B, and the A, it would light up number four, light bulb number four would light. If we were to remove that and put this code on, 0110, we would get number six to light up. So now you're saying to yourself, well, how does D, C, B, and A work out to this, like 0110, you know, how does that equal this, you know, or this, or how does anything work on this chart? Well, it's because they haven't included the most in important stuff, the most crucial information. These are numbers. D is eight, C is four, B is two, and A is one. And whenever you see this, DCBA in any order on an IC like this, A is always one, B is two, C is four, D is eight. And if you had more of these, it would be one, two, four, eight, 16, 32, 64, and so on and so on. So we're only dealing with four here, so we'll just keep this simple. All right, so just say we wanted to light up the number seven. All right, well, the number seven is four, five, six, seven. So that would be zero, one, one, one. We need to add all these together to make a number. And of course we don't need the number eight, so it just stays at zero or low. All right, so we take a look at the number seven, zero, one, one, one. So just say we wanted to light up the number five. Okay, so we would need to have zero, one, zero, one, because four plus one is five and you leave the other two at ground. So we take a look at number five, zero, one, zero, one. This is absolutely crucial to have on this list, but they don't put it there. I guess they just expect people to know this. So now if we look at the pin assignment for this IC, all right, these are the numbers that would actually light up. So say number four was hooked to a light bulb here, and number two was hooked to a light bulb here, and these would all just hook to ground. All right, say number nine is hooked to a light bulb. All of these would be hooked to either LEDs or light bulbs with current limiting resistors or whatever. These are the pin numbers. These are the actual numbers of the lights that would light up if you give this the correct binary code. 
So in order to use this properly, we obviously want to write this in. A is 1, B is 2, C is 4, and D is 8. All right. So say I wanted to light up the number 9. So this would be 0, 0, 1, 1. That would be the way it goes. So these would be at ground and these two would be at 5 volts. And that would be our code to light up number 9. If I wanted to light up number 2, it would be 1, 0, 0, 0. And that's how number 2 would light up. And that's really how this works. So let's take a look at this on an actual breadboard. I have a CD4028 plugged into the breadboard here, and it's hooked up to all these LEDs. These LEDs represent 0 through 9, so this is 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and all the way up to 9 here. On the input of the CD4028, I've got four 10K resistors going to ground. Now, if you look here, you'll see A, D, C, B, and the four 10K resistors to ground. Now, the reason I have this here is because you just can't let these float, because this is a really high impedance input, and static or just any kind of floating voltages on here can cause an erroneous reading. So you have to bring these down to ground. Now, since this is such a high impedance input, having a 10K resistor on the input just makes the IC think that they're grounded out. Now, the nice thing about a 10K resistor is I can apply 5 volts to this point and bring this high, and 5 volts through a 10K resistor, you know, is very low current to the supply. So, if I want to make this go 1, 0, 0, 0, I would have the number 2 lit up. So, this one here would go high and so on and so forth. So by having these 10K resistors here, all I really have to do is put combinations of positive voltages here to get 0 through 9. And I'll display that here right now. So what I'm going to do is hook up the power here. All right, and you'll see this little LED lighting up. All right, so this IC is facing this way, just like this IC is here. So if I want to light up the number 1, I'm going to have to make that high, so it'll be 1, 0, 0, 0. These will all just be left alone because they're just thinking they're at ground, so they're all zeros. Right now, this is all zeros, and that's why the zero LED is lighting up. So in order to make this little red number 1 LED light up, I have to make this high. So I'll take a positive wire and touch it to pin number 10 here, and you'll see the number 1 light up. So this is a positive wire here just from the rail. And I'll just touch this to the resistor, and you can see the number one lights up. So I'll remove that. So just say I want to light up the number eight. Well, this would be zero, one, zero, zero. So I would touch that positive to pin number 11. I'll do that right now. There we go, number eight. All right, so just say I wanted to make Oh, the number 6 light up. It would have to be 1, 1, 0, 0, because 4 plus 2 is 6. All right, so I'll take two of these leads here. Plug the first one in here, and the second one in here. And there's the number 6 lit up. And that's just how this goes. And other ICs before this will do this at very, very fast speeds, depending on what is actually hooked up to this. So if it was a frequency counter, this would be done at extremely fast speeds, or even a voltmeter, anything like that. What I'm doing right now is just extremely slow, just to show you how this is actually working. So next, we're going to take a look at a BCD to 7 segment decoder. This IC is a binary coded decimal to seven segment display driver or seven segment decoder, however you want to look at that. So this IC, which is a 74HC high speed CMOS 4511, has the ability to directly drive one LED seven segment display. So here's a block with two of them in it and two decimal places. So this is one seven segment display. So it takes seven segments to make up that number eight. All right, now each one of those segments has a letter that identifies it. So this is A, B, C, D, E, F, and G. Now, these letters right here are the letters that tell you to wire pin 13 to this segment here, 
and then B would be wired to pin 12, and so on and so forth in order to make this display something logical. Now this IC has a whole bunch of nice little features. It's got uh, a lamp test that has a blanking and latch enable. So latch enable is memory. And basically what that is, is that when you latch this, it'll just hold that digit. So uh, in the old days, when you looked at an old oh, Heathkit counter or something like that, they had ICs and they called them memory. Well, actually, they're just latches. That's all they are. And this has that latching ability inside here. So in order to make things even more confusing, of course, we have this silliness going on here again. These are the BCD inputs, but they've got D0, D1, D2, and D3. Well, they have numbers here. Why not just put the correct corresponding numbers? So D0 would be 1. All right, D1 would be 2. D2 would be 4. And D3 would be 8. So again, we know how the BCD, the binary works on this side from what we just previously looked at. So let's take a look at this seven segment decoder display driver on the breadboard. The 74HC4511 right here, which is this little IC, is controlling this seven segment display. This one here is completely unhooked, so we can ignore that. These 10K resistors are here for the exact same reason those 10K resistors are there. The input impedance to this IC is extremely high, and if I didn't have them here, I would start to get just false display. It would display just random weirdness, most likely. So, well, I can probably even display that. I'll pull one of these open. Now you can see that it's still zero, but if I just touch the pins with my finger, you can see that it just goes to craziness. So I can make it read the number four. So now the gate of the FET has got a charge on it. It's somewhere between five volts and zero. And you know, however long it would stay like that without starting to read something crazy, who really knows? You know, digits will randomly start going missing and stuff here and there as it goes between the uh, rail and zero volts. So there's enough voltage on that right now for it to actually read a number. But of course you can see that this would just cause major problems with this display, right? Because anything else that we tried to run on this, this four would be interfering with it because it wouldn't clear. Yeah, there we go. There's some random weirdness right now. So what I'm going to do is put this 10K resistor back into the input pin here. And that will bring it back to zero and make everything stable. Now you'll notice on, on some really, really large circuit boards, you'll see tons and tons of these ICs, not particularly this one, but lots of ICs like this, and they don't have any pull-down resistors. And that's because the IC before it is actually pulling it low or making it go high. When I say low, taking it to ground or to high, whatever the high is on that circuit board. So you'll see, you know, huge circuit boards with massive arrays of these things with very few components, maybe a few tantalums or electrolytics, but really no resistors anywhere. So what we're going to do is make this thing display like the actual decimal display that we had here. But this one here will actually display a number for us instead of just lighting up a single bulb. And it works pretty much the same way. So in order to get the number two to light up, I need to bring this to five volts and this would be zero, zero, zero. So there'd be one, zero, zero, zero would be the binary code for this right now. So I'll take five volts and I'll put it on that pin and we'll get the number two, just like that. Now, if I wanted to make that say number six, this would be one, one, zero, zero. So I'll put five volts on D2 here and that will give us the number six. And there we have the number six. Now this IC has a, a neat feature. It has memory or latch enable. And if you look at some of the old Heathkit stuff or, you know, some of the old frequency counters, they actually have ICs that are just, you know, a dedicated latch and they call them memory. And really what it is, is it just makes this thing remember when you open up all the inputs and they just go to ground again. So by making this latch high will cause this thing to hold the digit there. So what I'll do is I'll bring the latch high, which is this pin right here. All right, you can see we have the six. Now I'll just open these two. 
All right, and you can see it's holding memory right now. So if I open this latch, it'll just drop to zero again. It'll lose its memory. So I'll just open this, and you can see it drops to zero. Now another neat feature about this is that if I have this high, it will hold this. It's memory. This is in its memory right now. So just say I wanted to uh, light up the number two again here. So number two should light, but it's waiting for the next pulse. So if I was to open this and close this again, it will store the two. So I'll just open this and close this again. And you can see the number two is in there and I can remove the number two and it will hold it. So this is really handy for frequency counters or, you know, any kind of display where there'd be a lot of flicker. Having that memory is the reason that the frequency counters and all that have that there, or you'd, you'd see, you know, a lot of digit movement. It'd be uh, really actually kind of aggravating. So a handy little feature there. And of course this IC has a bunch of other things. It has, you know, blanking. So it'll blank the display and it has lamp test. So lamp test, really what that does is it, it uh, lights up all the digits of the eight in the beginning. So sometimes they have a, a timer on the lamp test pin. And, uh, you know, as soon as the, the unit comes on, it has a, you know, shows the number eights and then it will, you know, go to the normal display. There's a whole bunch of different ways of doing that. But, um, yeah, just a pin that you can use or not use depending on what you're designing. So this is exactly how this works and computers work pretty much exactly the same way except they use much larger strings of binary than what we're doing here. This is really kind of small, but this is the basement floor or the ground floor and this gives you the idea of exactly what the ones and the zeros are. And now you can most likely decode some binary charts. I hope you enjoyed this video on how binary works in your electronic devices. If you did, you can let me know by giving me a big thumbs up and hang around. There'll be many more videos just like this in the near future. So until next time, bye for now.